but they show you know, a lot of times when people ain't getting spiritually fed, it's because not because the food's not coming. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us all rejoice and be glad in it. This is a time that we rejoice and we are glad in it. And as we live stream, as we share with you for the last day of our Spring Leadership Conference, that you will take a moment, whether you're in sanctuary or you're watching us on live stream, that you will press the share button so that someone else can experience the rich good news of Jesus Christ as we are approaching Palm Sunday, approaching Resurrection Sunday. We are listening in on what thus saith the Lord unto us through our lecture series as well as our guest revivalists. Tonight we are in for a special treat. As you're sharing, as you're getting ready, make sure you grab your Bibles, grab a notepad, bring a pen, whatever you have. To write down some of this good news that you will hear tonight. Tonight I am elated to invite.
invite my friend, my brother, the proud pastor of the Pilgrim Baptist Church of Chicago, the home of gospel music, none other than my friend, my brother, Pastor Isaiah E. Johnson, Jr. Welcome him as he comes. Eternal God, our Father, before we ask you for anything, God, we simply want to thank you for everything. Lord, we want to thank you for yet another day that you have allowed us to behold. God, we want to thank you for your goodness and your grace. God, we thank you for your mercies which are new every morning. God, we thank you even in this present moment for allowing us to come together to worship you in the beauty of holiness. Father, my simple request tonight is spirit of the living God, fall fresh on me. Melt me, mold me, fill me, use me. Sweet spirit of the living God, fall fresh on me. Father, we know that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. So, Spirit of the living God, have your way in this place like only you can. Lord, I have prepared, but I need your power. Lord, I have studied, but I need your strength. And Lord, when it's all said and done, you take all of the glory, you take all of the honor, and you take all of the praise. It's in Jesus' name that I do pray. Amen. Amen. And amen. If you are glad to be in the house of the Lord tonight, why don't you give the Lord a hand and God a praise? Lord, the mind of God, 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 what a mighty God we do serve. I don't know about you, but I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the C.B. Brown Spring Leadership <laughs> Conference by way of the Second Baptist Church. I want to give honor to be in the house of God tonight. Um, I want to give honor to my brother, my beloved brother, Pastor Johnson Brown. Yeah. Second Baptist Church. We honor the Lord for every pastor, every preacher. We honor the Lord for Lottie, Lottie, everybody. <laughs> this is good to be in the house one more time. Certainly, I honor God for Pastor Howell. God bless you, man of God. Amen. And last but not least, I honor the Lord for my lovely wife, Lady Taylor. God bless you. I bring you greetings from the Pilgrim Baptist Church, Aston State, the home of gospel music, located on 33rd in Indiana. It's just a joy to be here tonight. I don't count it for granted because I understand that your pastor could have invited any other person, but he saw fit to invite his country boy. So I just <laughs> thank God for the opportunity to be here tonight. Well, it's been told to me that uh, you never want to make people happy twice, meaning happy to see you come and happy to see you go. <laughs> so uh, if you have your Bibles, can you grab those at this time as we prepare to go to the Word of God? I have been given the assignment tonight to teach on the value of following the Holy Spirit. That is my assignment tonight. Yes, the value of following the Holy Spirit. So if you have your Bibles, can you turn with me to the Gospel according to John? Is the gospel according to John, John chapter 16. And we want to place the master's magnifying glass on verse 13 tonight. Yes, John chapter 16. Certainly we honor God for our virtual viewers who are worshiping with us tonight. We give God praise for it. Yes, John chapter 16. We want to look at one verse. Verse 13. When you got it, say amen. 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 If you don't got it, say wait on me. Amen. Amen. Yes. 
It's John chapter 16. Again, I have the assignment of teaching on the value of following the Holy Spirit. The Bible says in John chapter 16, verse 13, How be it when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will show you things to come. Can I read that one more time? This is Jesus talking. He says, how be it when he, the spirit of the truth, is come. He will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself. But whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. My brothers and my sisters, I want to start off by saying tonight that there is value in following. The truth is, there is good and even gain in following certain things. For a mechanic, following OSHA requirements is of value because those requirements helps to ensure a safe and secure working environment. For a pilot, there is value in following the Federal Aviation Administration because it ensures that you arrive to your desired destination safely. For a doctor, there is value in following HIPAA because it protects the personal information of a patient. My brothers and my sisters, there is value in following certain things. But can I tell you tonight, as for the believer, there is value in following the Holy Spirit. Let me press pause and rewind. I said, as for the believer, there is value in following the Holy Spirit. Because here's the truth tonight, my brothers and my sisters. We cannot live this Christian life without the Holy Spirit. We cannot walk this Christian walk without the Holy Spirit. I wonder, can anybody testify that when you try to do things on your own, you messed it up every time. Is there a witness in the house? Can anybody testify that when you tried to lead your own self, you dropped the ball every time? My brothers and my sisters, we cannot walk this Christian journey without the Holy Spirit. Because here it is. The Holy Spirit will lead us when we're lost. The Holy Spirit gives us clarity when we're confused. The Holy Spirit gives us direction in our difficulty. In fact, I believe that's why the old church used to say it this way. Lead me. Guide me along the way. For if you lead me, I cannot stay. Lord, let me walk each day with thee. Lead me. Oh, Lord, anybody? Is that somebody's testimony tonight? I need the Lord to lead me. I need the Lord to guide me because I cannot do it on my own. My brothers and my sisters, as we tiptoe into the text, Jesus is at the perimeter of his purpose. Jesus is at the door of his destiny. Jesus is preparing for the cross of Calvary and his crucifixion. Pastor Chauncey, Fulfilling his eternal destiny would mean his earthly departure. But the good news is he assured his disciples that he would not leave them by themselves because he would send the comforter. That word comforter in Greek is a term called parakletos, which means a helper, an assistant, one, one, one that comes alongside. And the leaders, I want to tell you tonight, we must always be reminded 
that as we labor in the vineyard, the Holy Spirit is our helper. The Holy Spirit is our counselor. The Holy Spirit is our intercessor. The Holy Spirit is our strengthener. And it is here in John chapter 16 that Jesus provides some holy helpful hints that will help us in our understanding of knowing that there is value in following the Holy Spirit. So that raises a question, my brothers and my sisters. I'm not going to be before you alone. Uh, the critical question of the lesson tonight is what value can be found in following the Holy Spirit? Anybody interested in knowing tonight? Here it is. Let me give it to you lest I hold you too long. As it relates to the value that we can receive when following the Holy Spirit, the first thing I see in the text is, number one, divine revelation. Can the church say divine revelation? It's right here in verse 13. If you haven't tore it out your Bible, watch what the Bible says. The Bible says, how be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come. Here it is. He will guide you whoo, into all truth. Notice, my brothers and my sisters, Jesus says that when the spirit of truth is come, he will guide you into all truth. Now, this speaks of the spirit giving understanding of the mind of God and of the mysteries of God that can only be known in God. Let me say that one more time. I want to make sure you don't miss that. This speaks of the Holy Spirit giving revelation of the mind of God and of the mysteries of God that could only be known in God. This speaks of truth that can only come from God. And can I tell you, my brothers and my sisters, we live in a day where people are seeking truth in all of the wrong places. Can I say it one more time? I say we live in a time where people are seeking truth in all of the wrong places. What, what are you saying, Pastor Johnson? People are seeking truth in horoscopes. I know I might get in trouble, but that's all right. We live in a time where people are seeking truth through zodiac signs. We live in a time where people are seeking truth through social media. But can I tell you, my brothers and my sisters, it is the Holy Spirit that will give us revelation of the truth. It is the Holy Spirit that will give us righteous revelation. It is the Holy Spirit that will give us divine disclosure. It is the Holy Spirit that will give us eternal enlightenment. And I don't know who I came to talk to tonight, but I need you to understand. The Holy Spirit wants to reveal truth to you. In fact, Jesus said it this way in John 14 and 6. I am the way, the truth, and the life. <laughs> yeah, with, with, without the assistance and the aid of the Holy Spirit, we will remain in the dark regarding the truth. Without the leading and the guidance of the Holy Spirit, we will be ignorant regarding the truths of God. Here it is. What value can be found in following the Holy Spirit? Well, the first thing I see in the text is, number one, there is divine revelation. But not only is there divine revelation, but secondly, there is divine unification. Can the church say divine, divine. unification? It's right here in the text. I promise you I ain't making this up. Watch what the Bible says. It's right here in verse 13. The text says... For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. Lord have mercy. I, I, I love this because it shows the interdependence of the triune Godhead. Watch this. Here it is. As the Holy Spirit gives us divine revelation, Jesus tells his disciples and even you and I, what the Holy Spirit reveals to us 
will be in sync with what Jesus taught. Okay, okay, okay. Let me let me let me try this thing again. He said, say it one more time. I'm gonna say it one more time. What Jesus is saying is when the Holy what the Holy Spirit reveals to us, it'll be in sync with what Jesus already taught. Here it is. In other words, what Jesus says is the Holy Spirit will not tell us anything different than what Jesus already said. And let me show you the divine unification in the text. Notice what the text says. I want you to see this. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. In other words, what Jesus says is the Holy Spirit is not speaking by his own volition. The Holy Spirit is not speaking by his own intention. But the Holy Spirit will only speak the mind of God, which is in line with what Jesus taught. In other words, there's harmony. It, 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 it's in correlation and not contrary. It is in alignment and not against. And this is a word for us tonight because the reality is we live in a time of strange doctrine. We live in a time of strange teaching. I don't know about you, but I have never saw it in my life in church where you hear some of the things that come forth out of the pool, across the pulpit. We live in a time where people are saying any and everything, and guess what? Jesus never taught it. We live in a time where people are saying any and everything, but it does not align with what Jesus taught. But here it is. Just as Christ never spoke in opposition to the Father, the Holy Spirit will never speak in opposition to what Christ already taught. I want you to see the rebel. I want you to see the unification. There is perfect agreement. There, there is perfect harmony. There is perfect unity. And that's a word for us tonight. Because as leaders, as we preach and as we teach, we must make sure that we're not saying things that Christ never said. That's one of the main things that has many people in trouble today. They want to be so deep that even Jesus can't find them. You know, they want to sound intelligent. They want to be intellectual. They want to try to impress folk. But what we need to do is stay in line with what Christ taught. And the good news is while as we're following the Holy Spirit, if we're truly following the Holy Spirit, he won't allow us to share anything that's opposed to what Christ has already taught. You know, Pastor Howard, we, we, we live in a time where people are trying to be entertainers instead of servants. We live in a time where people feel like they have to bring games and gimmicks in the church house to get people to come back to the house. In fact, the other day, I, I'm not going to call this person's name, but I was watching on social media where this preacher was getting a haircut while he was preaching. A haircut while you preaching? But Jesus made it very clear. If I be lifted up, Lord have mercy, from the earth, I'll draw all men unto me. That, 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 that reminds me of the great hymn, How to Reach the Masses, the men of every birth. For an answer, Jesus gave the key. He said, if I be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw. Who are we lifting up? Are we here to lift ourselves or are we here to lift the Savior? 
Are we here to lift our own agendas? Or are we here to live Christ? Bible says, Lord, thank you, Holy Spirit. Bible says in Matthew 5 and 16, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works. And here it is. And glorify your Father which is in heaven. It's not for us to get the shine. It's not for us to be in the spotlight. But it's about us giving glory to him. When we preach, it ought to be for the glory of God. When we teach, it ought to be for the glory of God. If we're cleaning the church house, it ought to be for the glory of God. We must make sure that we are in step and in sync with what Christ taught. No, no, I want you to see that in the scripture again. I want you to see this. He says, for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. He's not, not relying on his own opinion, not relying on his own philosophy, but it's all in sync with the mind of God and with what Christ taught in the scripture. Here it is. I'm out of your way, my brothers and my sisters. What value can we find in following the Holy Spirit? First thing I see in the text is there is divine revelation. There is divine unification. But lastly and finally, my brothers and my sisters, there will be divine illumination. Can the church say divine illumination? Is it in the text? It's right here. I ain't making this 